What? Oh, these little old things? So, some brewing buddies have been telling me about this thing called Barkeeper's Friend. It's supposed to be a good way of cleaning stainless steel appliances. Uh, look, I've got two brew buckets here, both of which are clean. Just wash them with water. But uh, this one here, I gave a very cursory 30 second wipe down with this Barkeeper's Friend stuff. Shiny. Now, my name is Martin Keane, and I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And this week, I am revisiting the style of barley wine. Specifically, American barley wine. So a few months back, I tried English barley wine. This time, we're going stateside. And this being an American beer, it's uh, just in one word, bigger. It's bigger in gravity, bigger in hops. Let's put it in. Going for a nice fine crush of 0.03 inches in my grey mill. So hopefully I can be pretty efficient with this batch. Uh, whisk. Mashing this at 149 Fahrenheit or 65 Celsius. I'm going to mash this one maybe for a little bit longer than usual given that I am only at 149 Fahrenheit, so probably for around 90 minutes. Now, the style of American barley wine should really give you a rich, intense, malty character. But it also comes with a fair amount of hop bitterness, flavour and aroma as well. So, whereas with my English barley wine, I added bittering hops and that was it. With the American barley wine, I'm really going to bitter this quite high, but I'm also going to be adding in some flavour and aroma hops at the end of the boil. My recipe is going to be quite heavy at 10%, although the style allows you to go up to around 12%. But I've got an original gravity here of 1091. 1091. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Um, the way that I'm going to get there is I am combining as my base malts Maris Otter and Vienna malt at 37% each. To that, I will add 11% of biscuit malt and then 5% of Crystal 80 and 5% of Flaked Barley. And the remaining 5% will come in the form of corn sugar, which I'll add in the boil. So let's talk then about fermenters. Over the years, I have fermented in all sorts of things from plastic buckets to carboys to conical fermenters to pressurized fermenters to even kegs. But I've been looking to upgrade my fermentation capabilities and I've had two criteria in mind. Firstly, I want my fermenters to be able to take advantage of my Blickman glycol chiller. I don't want to be using chest freezers anymore for temperature control. I want everything to be handled through this glycol chiller. And the second criteria is for the fermenter to be able to operate under pressure. So I want to be able to do things like cold crash without introducing oxygen and also perform pressurized transfers directly into kegs. Oh, oh and I nearly forgot there's, there's actually a third criteria as well. I need the fermenter to be able to hold five gallon batches, but quite often I end up brewing two and a half gallon batches like I'm doing today. So the fermenters that I pick need to be able to support both five gallon batches and also two and a half gallon batches. 
As I started to do some research, it became obvious that Spike Brewing had everything that I needed. So I have been hooked up here with two fermenters from Spike Brewing. Thank you, Ryan. And I'm gonna be demonstrating these on the channel from here on in. So there's two here. I've got the Spike Flex Plus and then the Spike Brewing CF5 Conical. I'll be using the CF5 Conical next week so let's start off by taking a closer look at this guy, the Flex Plus. Now the first impression I got when I pulled this out of the box is this is a well-made solid piece of kit that I feel like is gonna last me years. Um, but the other thing that I thought about when I saw this is, holy heck, what have I let myself in for? This looks really complicated. <laughs> There are a lot of different ways that you can use this. It's a very flexible system. Flex plus, flexible, yeah, maybe that's where they got the name. Um, so you've got all of these tri-clamp ports on this thing. So you've got one here at the front and then another one here at the side. And then on the lid, you have another one and a half inch tri-clamp port up here and then a bigger four inch port at the top. So you can put different things in different parts of the fermenter. Uh, it also can be really locked down here and pressurized up to 15 PSI, so you can do things like closed transfers in here. So let's take a look at all of the components and how I've got this set up for right now. So at the front here, I've got my butterfly valve. This just opens and closes the valve here. I've then got this second port here, which I'm using as a thermowell, which will come in handy when I connect this up to my glycol chiller. Then on the top here, I've got a little area for an airlock, but you can also get accessories like this 90 degree barb and just put this on instead if you wanted to create a blow off tube and just hook this up. As for this big port on the top, well, you can just get a blanking plate for this. I think you can also get a clear plate so you can actually look in the fermenter and see what's going on. Uh, I've got something else in here though. And that is a cooling coil. So this is where I'm gonna send glycol in and out of my fermenter. This will get nice and cold and be in contact with the beer. You can see that the inside of the lid has this O-ring here, which helps with the pressurized seal. And we've got the thermal well in here and also the racking arm. One cool little feature is that this racking arm has a notch here on the outside so you can see the position of the racking arm. So when this is pointing down, the racking arm's pointing down. And if I twist this, then the racking arm is twisted as well. So I can actually make sure that the racking arm is at the angle that I want it. Uh, when I am draining out of here. Now there are a bunch of accessories as well, things like a carbonation stone and a clean in place kit. I'll show those in the coming weeks as, uh, as I get more familiar with these fermenters. Um, but the thing I need to do now is to hook this thing all up to my glycol chiller. I've got a pump and a temperature controller which I'm gonna put on my glycol chiller. And then I have this insulated line that will connect the two. In addition to that, this guy is going to get a jacket. Wise, big beer, big IBUs, going for about 84 IBU. I'm gonna get most of that through my bittering hop, which I'm gonna add right at the start of the boil here. That is Galena. Um, in fact, it's ready to go in right now. And five minutes from the end, I'm going to add some flavor and aroma hops. I've got a combination here of Cascade and Northern Brewer. So we'll get some fruity aromas and, and, and flavors. Also a little bit of sort of earthy, woody flavor as well from the Northern Brewer. That's gonna go in with five minutes to go and at about that time as well is when I'm gonna add in my sugar. Um, for a five gallon batch, you would add in one pound of sugar.
Hmm, one slight problem here. I have actually made a little bit less than two and a half gallons, and that means that the temperature probe thermal well is not actually in the beer. It's slightly above the liquid line. So that is something to keep an eye on. If I make a two and a half gallon batch, um, I need to make sure I've delivered two and a half gallons, otherwise I can't use this thermal well here. Now a big beer like this, you are absolutely going to want to add some oxygen into this thing. So I'm gonna use my oxygen wand here uh, just for a minute or so to really make sure that the yeast are gonna have enough oxygen to work with. Now I did sanitize the lid. Uh, still need to add my yeast. I am using white yeast 10 to 56 American ale yeast. This should be able to handle this high gravity beer and my original gravity did end up coming in at 1090. As for this clamp, Sprite Brewing recommend you just clamp this hand tighten as much as you can. And sanitizing my cooling coil here, so let's put that in. Also have an airlock and I almost forgot about my tilt hydrometer. I'm gonna drop this in too. So everything's in, now I'm gonna hook it up to the glycol. So in my Blickman glycol chiller, I have added a pump and a temperature controller, which I'm gonna to set to 68 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius. That is the temperature I want the beer to ferment at. Um, then coming out the back of this is this insulated tubing, which is where the glycol will flow. And I'm just gonna plug that into the top here. As for the temperature probe, because I can't use the thermal well, I've tucked the probe into the back of the jacket here. There's a little hole at the back of the jacket, um, so it's going to just sit on the outside uh, of this fermenter, measuring the temperature. I think that will get me actually pretty close to, to the temperature of the liquid. All right, time to plug in the pump and let the, uh, the glycol do its thing. Okay, the glycol is flowing because the wort temperature is reported to be 71 degrees rather than 68. So it will just recirculate through that cooling coil until we get to 68 and uh, then maintain that temperature. All right, so today's tasting is six months in the making. Okay, so you said a lot about like better with age. Yeah. Which one is this? Well, the, the thing is though, it hasn't actually been six months since I brewed this American barley wine. Um, this is actually only about six weeks old, but, oh. but there's a little surprise to come. So let's just okay. move, move into looking at this beer first of all. Um, what do you think? Looks kind of orange. <laughs> <laughs> Deep, deep orange. You cannot see through this. Light does not pass no. through this drink. My goodness. I am getting a bit of hop aroma with this one. What about you? Okay, so it smells very subtle and it doesn't smell too overwhelming for what I would think a barley wine is. And, and what it looks like, right? It looks overwhelming. Yeah, it, it looks, looks scary. like this is going to be quite the adventure. Um, I want to try it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's okay, do it. Thank you. Oh, it is thick and sweet and heavy, and that is um, got a lot going on. Yeah, it's it's very thick. Definitely a sipper. Yeah. And not a chugger. The sweetness. Once I tried it, I think that I I know that I smelt the sweetness a little bit more. Hmm. Yeah, I think there is a lot going on. I think it would improve with age. I wish I'd been organized enough to brew this six months ago, but mm -hmm. you know what? I did brew an English barley wine six months ago. So, you did? Mm, and I kept it. I've, uh, I've been keeping some of my beers and just stashing them uh, here in the basement. So, um, you wanna give one a try? I think so. So this is the aged English barley wine, but mm. I still think we're missing something. Yeah. I think 
we need another taster. Mm. What up? Hi, hi. <laughs> Why are we so close? <laughs> I seem to remember you tried the English barley wine. That was, it was me. Uh, that's very strong. No, that has a very strong, like, it coats the mouth. I would say, like, it's, it's thick. So last time you said that you thought this tasted a little bit like brandy. To me, it almost starts to taste like the beginning of a liquor. Liquory. Liquory, yeah. That's the correct term. You can look that one up. Webster's. Mm. Liquory or licorice No, definitely more like liquor, like not beer. Like it almost has like a sort of whiskey type flavor. I'll tell you what, it tastes different from last time. It's definitely matured. Fuller bodied, I would say. Mm. No, it's all right. I if think, you like this kind of thing. Yeah, I think as a like an after dinner drink, a brandy sort of mm. uh, style drink, it works quite well as like a dessert beer. I don't even know if that's a thing, but for sure, the one thing that I was most interested in is does it taste different or does it just gonna taste stale or something after six months? I think it tastes different. I think it tastes more complex. Well, thank you all for tasting this beer. Maybe in six months we should do like the American barley wine after six months, and then this barley wine after a year. We'll, yeah. we'll see. But for now, cheers! cheers. cheers.